Hi everyone, it's Ollie from Magic Hands Hobbies. Today we're going to paint the uh, Blood Bowl uh, Armoured Troll from the new Season 2 set. I've already primed with the, uh, with the black and we're now just applying a blue. Now I decided to paint this one blue because I felt that it seemed more aquatic um, than it did anything else, this troll. Um, I liked all the scales and the fins on the back. So we put a base coat of blue down. And we're moving on to the base coats of like a flesh, flesh colored brown, um, starting light. And we're gonna wash this up later and add on some uh, highlights as we go. So that's the flesh color brown down. Moving on to Agrax Earthshade. And we're gonna apply this over the flesh area um, to help fill in some shading. I'm trying to do this reasonably simple. I don't want to spend too much time uh, on this process. Um, I do have other methods of painting and you know I will spend time layering but uh, for this particular set, uh, the Blood Bowl set um, and this particular model, it's not something that I really fancy uh, doing. So we'll let that wash dry as we move on to other stuff. We're going to move on to the black Null oil and put that all over the blue. We're going to use a mix of khaki and beastie brown from game color here just to start bringing up um, or building up the highlights um, over the flesh color. Just capturing, uh, capturing the higher edges, not covering the deeper recesses, gradually building up the highlights. Each layer that you apply of a highlight should be progressively smaller than the one before so as not to cover up the detail. I'm going to use a turquoise colour now to start bringing up the blue. Quite often people will use the original base colour uh, to go over the top of the shade or the wash that they've applied. Uh, I decided not to do that this time, I've gone straight in for a brighter tone. This is mainly because I'm planning on changing the colour very slightly to almost green. Um, this will be done using this jade green from Vallejo Game Color, and you can see now I'm going to be applying this on a smaller area um, along the top edges of most of the volumes that we have here. Now going back over with another wash. This is because I felt that it was a bit too harsh at this point and I wanted to tone it down. Um, I believe this was the Nuln Oil, I don't think it was the Agrax Earth Shade. This will just knock it back a little bit. And then going back in with a mixture of the blue and the jade colour that I had just done, I'm going to go in and start applying actual highlights to thinner raised areas um, across the troll's skin. Now I say skin, is it a skin? I suppose it is. Now we're going in with this, um, a mix of the same two colours but focusing more on the jade colour. Just gently picking out smaller areas, building up the highlights. The progression of layers um, is not particularly smooth here. Uh, but that doesn't bother me. You know, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. You know, the more practice you put in, the better your blends will become. But I didn't want to be spending too long on this. I don't uh, necessarily like spending lots and lots of time on one model. This is just one member of a team. And I certainly won't be putting in the effort of all the difficult techniques across smaller models. There's just no need for it. You'll burn out. If you, if you do the same amount of effort, the extreme effort across all of your models, your, your patience will burn out and you won't want to complete it and it becomes more of a chore. So there are certain times when I like to keep my methods simple. Base coat, wash, build it back up and then work up towards a few highlights. I'm not particularly worried about the blending. So 
So just starting to fill in materials now. So that is the cloth and materials on his hand and I suppose his loin cloth covering up the uh, delicate regions. Going to start putting in some base colours on the wood here. Now you, th you would think, well, why didn't you put base colours on all of these before? Well, there's a method that a lot of people use, which is inside out. So you start at the hard to reach areas and move out. Um, and that's exactly what I've done. So I've started uh, on the skin um, and I'm working my way out uh, to the extremities of the model. But again, it's the same process. I'm just putting down base colors at the moment. So now putting all the metallics down uh, for all the ones that I can see. Sometimes it's pretty hard to spot. You'll notice I haven't touched the goblin in his hand. Um, I'll move on to that in a bit. Cayman Green. Now this is the first time I tried this um, as a skin tone. Usually I go much, much darker and build up. But in this particular case, I thought, well, I saw the green. I like the look of it. I'm going to give it a go. This is a very old wash. Um, just using this a red wash. You can mix up any red wash or any off the shelf one, but this is one that I happen to have left over. Just putting it around these, I suppose, boils or spots or sores, whatever they might be. A bit of plague brown for the ropes. Now we're going to apply some washes. So this is the Null Noil from Games Workshop. Citadel paints. Just going to apply this over all the dark areas of the wood. Don't let it pool. It's one of the worst things you can do. Now I'm going to apply the same across the armor. Now I have a certain technique of the way I produce my uh, armors, especially rust armor, and we'll come to that in a second. While that's drying, I'm going to put some of the Agrax Earthshade over the top of the cloth. I've already put Null Oil on the cloth. And the idea is I'm trying to produce stains and just generally grime the cloth up. Don't want it to look perfect. Pretty sure they wouldn't uh, keep it perfect for the, uh, the Black Orcs and in particular this troll. Now applying some onto the bone. This is the Agrax Earthshade still. So the browner tone. And now this is my rest that I'm going to start doing. I'm generally just stabbing at this. Um, just put the brown on top of the black. Um, now there's a little bit of pooling there, which I think I don't spot and end up leaving it there. So I've done that all over the metal and let that dry. And now we're going to just start applying a few higher tones of color on the, uh, the wood. Just start bringing out the grain. You don't need to be accurate. Rough and ready will uh, still give you a decent effect by the end of it. A bit of Monster Brown by Army Painter War Paints. Now we're just bringing out some of the um, the edge highlights and uh, some broader highlights across the wood. Again, just applying a bit more of the Agrax Earthshade across here just to knock the highlights back a little bit. You can achieve, achieve the same effect just by um, layering more cautiously. Back to the rust. Now, literally, I'm going to dab in areas, being careful not to let it pull too much. But the randomness of your dabbing will give a real nice rust effect. You can see I did let it collect from the uh, the last application on his hand guard, his bracer, um, which is not good, but it's not going to be detrimental to the paint job. Okay, so moving on to some brighter greens. These are going to now bring out some very bright edge highlights, just picking out extreme uh, extremities on his uh, skin. Just 
just thinking about where the light is hitting the light will be coming down from above so you can see on his forearm on his right hand his right arm there i haven't taken the green underneath keeping it onto the upper edges you see how the rust has affected you've got those stains across it that's not how the shoulder pad will end up because what I do is I do the metal base underneath and then I will apply paint um, the color that I want um, as if it's been scratched away uh, just over the top of that you might think well why do that in the first place but the way I see it is it's um, quite often a nice idea to be able to try and put the the metal effect underneath the color that you want to apply and you'll, you'll see that it gives that impression that paint has scratched away because you are physically applying the paint over the metal just put a few highlights on all the bones and now just bringing back out the uh, the cloth just bringing some brightness back to it now. Using a variety of brush strokes, stabbing in some places, drawing the brush over the edges. I'm not trying to be particularly accurate here. It's cloth at the end of the day. There's going to be various textures. Um, I don't make the effort with this particular one to try and create material texture by having small brush strokes. That's not something that I wanted to do with this one in particular. Okay, so now we're moving on to the colours of the, uh, the metal. So I'm going to paint red over the, uh, the main face of this. I believe this was scarlet red by um, Vallejo Gain Colour Again I'm just stabbing it I don't want this to be a perfect paint job as in I don't want it to look like it was a perfect paint job a bit shaky camera there. I think I knocked it with my head when I was doing this Just drawing the colour around not taking it to the edges some of the uh, strapping around his bracer have you, I think it was beastie brain I used here and then I've applied uh, black wash over the top of it same for the strings securing the uh, well I want to say glove but it's not really a glove but the cloth around his hand I've already applied black wash to the metal vein here on the, uh, I'm going to say his shoe, funny looking shoe, um, obviously it's a trap, like a bear trap, but now we're just applying some brown wash to it, a little bit extra onto the cloth, just trying to uh, re-emphasize the st you know, stains across, you know, random stains across it. At the end of the day, the more layers you put on, the more texture, the more vibrancy and variety you bring to the piece so now moving on to i think it was blood red that i'm using here again i'm just gently stabbing i don't want to be painting i don't want brush strokes appearing and i don't want this to look perfect so just gently placing the paint where we want it to be gradually doing smaller and smaller areas same principle as you would with layering but with this i'm trying to achieve an effect that makes it look like it's been painted and then it's worn away. Bit of sun yellow. Uh, so he started decorating the helmet that uh, he's using as a, a knee pad. Um, I've used this recipe uh, for various models that I've done in the past, including some Warhammer 40,000 Space Wolves. Um, I will end up moving on to those at some point and putting some tutorials of how I paint my Space Wolves. Putting some highlights on the goblin. Same principles, working from above. Let that dry, put a wash over it. A lot of people say washes are cheating. Well, the way I see it is, 
a wash is a paint it's a tool at the end of the day um, it's it's used to do to achieve certain effects and that's what I'm going to use it for starting to pick out some finer details, gold earrings. Picking out his lips. Now on smaller models, the standard human size, elf size, you know, 28 mil models, I wouldn't even attempt to do this. I tend to be quite vague, but because the detail is there, you can't really avoid it. So I'm just trying to pick out his lips and just inside his mouth. I can come back and correct the teeth later. Standard black can be any black you want. Um, I tend not to go with a gloss uh, for nails. Picking out a few highlights on the helmet. Some of the painting I've done out, done off camera, you don't need to see every single little um, detail that I paint. It's the same principles across the uh, the entire model. We're going to try and dot the eye here. Not very easy. I don't like doing this. Not particularly. I got shaky hands. Not particularly easy. It's okay, not brilliant. The actual goblin, when I paint his eye in, that comes out much better and it's a lot smaller. Just picking out the teeth. Using an off-white here, the same white that I used for the, uh, the bones. It's like an ivory. thing I'd say is if you are handling the model with your fingers probably best to wear some kind of gloves the um, the acids that you put on the model can affect the uh, the way in which paint goes over it just highlighting up the lips here I simply added some white to the same original base color just to try and help pick it out following the lines of the sculpt Okay, so we're going to move on to the eyes of the goblin now. I wasn't particularly happy with the way it's currently looking, so I'm going to use some ivory, just try and fill the space out um, with the intention that I'm going to put some yellow down and make the eyes much brighter. If I just put yellow straight onto what was there, it wouldn't have been as, as vibrant. Okay, now we're coming in with the yellow to rebase the eyes. This will really make it pop with that ivory colour underneath it. Just being very gentle, trying not to get anything on the surrounding skin work. Yeah, looking much brighter. Let's try and get in there with the second eye. Okay, and then we're going to go with a very fine brush and just dot the eye.
final steps, just gradually going around the model, picking out anything that I might have missed, adding any additional highlights. The one thing you don't want to do is go too far with the model in terms of don't just keep going and going and going, get to a point and think, right, yep, that's good. And then don't go back to it unless it's something you've actually physically missed because you can overwork it. Um, I'm not doing this for anything other than my pleasure for me and my tabletop games. I'm not going to enter tournaments with this. I'm not going to enter any competitions for painting with this. I'm doing this to my level in the way that I uh, want it to look. And I'm quite happy with it. I'm not going to show a video for basing uh, this one in particular. All I used was the crackle paint. I painted the whole base brown, put some crackle paint over it from Games Workshop. Um, I forget the name of it. Um, let it dry and then put some white paint on to represent lines. And I think a tuft of grass. Um, from Army Painter and it all it all turned out pretty nice I was very happy with it the one thing I do need to do is put some decals on so here are some images of the final product um, I hope you guys have enjoyed it and um, if you like it and would like to see more please subscribe um, like the video and comment if you want to I'll see you in the next one bye